In this recording, we're going to focus on a question on performance measurement for management accounting. In particular, we're going to look at autumn 18 question uh, two. This is quite a popular area with students, typically because they're shorter questions and they're narrative based, but there are some common pitfalls that we we'll look at, particularly in this question. So you see here, 21 marks, very short question, not even a page in length in total. Briefly explain three weaknesses of Mary and John's current approach to evaluating annual trading performance and for each weakness suggest an improvement. So again, think about how you're gonna lay that out now. You want a weakness uh, as well as a related improvement and it's three by three. So three weaknesses and improvements, nine marks. So you're gonna have a link for each one. Then for six marks, suggest three non-financial performance uh, measures in the area of environmental sustainability and briefly explain your rationale. So you have three measures, one mark for getting the measure, one mark for the rationale. So again, think about your marks, the way you're gonna lay out your solution. And then three limitations of heat using a single external benchmark reference site as proposed by Kate. Three limitations, two marks each. So you see it's all narrative based, it's very short. There's only here, if you look at it, there's only three paragraphs of information. And that's why these questions are very popular. They come up nearly every year with the examiner and they're very popular with the student as well. The only problem is giving generic answers back. So you had about 40 minutes, 42 minutes to do a question like this. So if you read through it, you're told here, heat manufactures wood burning stoves directly to the general public and they produce them uh, in rural county meads. Founded 10 years ago by Mary and John and they're passionate about environmental sustainability. So that's where the part B is coming from. Significant increase in growth, but there's also increased competition in the last while, and they currently have 35 full-time staff members. So it's quite a big business now from its roots. They don't have financial backgrounds, but they have used two measures to measure performance, total sales revenue and quality of product returns. And that's how they judge whether the business is doing well. But you're asked to critique what are the weaknesses associated with that performance measurement system. They've recently appointed Kate Geary, and she has looked at a number of financial roles, particularly the hotel industry, and she's now looking at non-financial measures, environmental sustainability, which is what you're gonna do in part B. And she's also planning to benchmark Heath's performance against the last hotel she worked at, a five-star hotel in a major European city. So that's all the information you have, but the key point here is trying to keep it as directly relevant as possible to the facts of the case. If you go off on a generic tangent here, you come up with generic KPIs or generic weaknesses, you're going to get marked down. And you look at the solution, just the examiner feedback in the solution, 90% of students did it in this paper. So there's three optional questions, nine out of 10 students chose this. Why? Because it's the shortest one and there's no calculations. But what happened was A and B, A and C were answered well. Here, a lot of students gave very generic answers. They ignore the fact that they were looking for environmental sustainability KPIs and they just give generic KPIs. You must read the question carefully. Right? That's what the examiner is telling you. So it's important that we go back and look at it. Use those examiner feedbacks to see would I made the same mistake and can I learn from that going forward for my exam sitting. So first thing we're looking at is three weaknesses and for each weakness suggest an improvement. Now in these types of questions, I would always be a fan of a tabular format. So you put the weakness here and you put on the other side of the page, improvement. So it's clear to the examiner, you've answered both together and you're not gonna be doc marks. Try not do it in paragraph or essay format, it makes it very hard to read and mark and you're just making it harder for the examiner to give you marks. So what are the three weaknesses? Well, I suppose the first obvious weakness here is it's a very narrow set of performance measures. You're only looking at two performance measures, sales revenue and product returns, which means everyone's just gonna be focused on those narrow measures. You're not looking at the broader customer satisfaction. You're not looking at profitability. You're not looking at employee satisfaction. So it's too narrow. Too narrow, only two measures can lead to bias and tunnel vision. So what we mean by that is, if you've only two measures, everyone is just focused on maximizing sales and minimizing product return. They're not looking at profitability. They're not looking at how happy your customers are. Are you generating new customers? So it's too narrow. So the improvement here is 
create a more comprehensive performance measurement system. So for example, use balance scorecard. So remember balance scorecard is a big area in performance measurement in management accounting. You should be able to bring in your knowledge and show the examiner, I know what this is about. So you need a more comprehensive set there, not just two measures, you need a collection of measures. Otherwise people are gonna be so biased and tunnel vision on getting those measures to neglect the overall business. Sales alone does not equal profits. So the second big weakness is you're just using total sales. That doesn't look at your cost base. It doesn't look at profitability. You should focus on cost control and profits each year also. There's no point just looking at sales because your sales could be going up, but your cost could be going up quicker. So it's about profitability as well. Sales are a key metric, but they're only one metric. The drafts for three weaknesses. And then the final weakness would be low product returns. Not a good gauge here. So not a good gauge or not a good, I suppose better is to use it, the word, not a good measure. So again, why wouldn't it be a good measure? Well, if you think of it, you're selling wood pellet stoves. So they're going to be installed. So you're less likely to return once installed, more likely to have repairs. So if you're looking at this, you're, you're probably not looking at a good measure of returns because you might have very low returns, but you still might have unsatisfied customers because they're getting someone else to repair it in or they're getting you to repair it. So think about it, this is not a portable good. It's not like it's a laptop. It's not like it's a TV or something that you can just bring back very quickly. This has to be installed, uninstalled, so it's unlikely. So better to look at measures such as customer satisfaction survey, if you can do it. So you might ask, once you make the sale, you might ask to fill out a survey maybe a month afterwards to see if they're happy with the product. Level of repairs of new installs. Because that might give you an idea, well, if they're not happy, they're going to be looking for repair very quickly. And that is suggest, well, maybe there's something wrong here that we're having a repair on something that's been newly installed uh, relatively recently. So the key things you want to take away from here is look at the structure, nice and structured answer, clear weakness, clear improvement. And they're all directly relevant to the facts of the case. So use the information that's given. What are the measures? What is the type of business? Link it back to the type of business and to what you're given. Because the big danger here is because they're so popular, because they're so short and they're so narrative focused, students love them. But there's a higher threshold now. You have to apply your facts to the case, apply your knowledge. Otherwise, you're going to get doc marks very quickly. You're then asked for three non-financial performance measures in the area of environmental sustainability and a rationale for each. So again, for B, it's just your measure. But we often call a KPI, Key Performance Indicator, and your rationale. So again, these are nice, straightforward ones. The big problem the examiner had this year was students just give generic KPIs. They didn't link it back to environmental sustainability. Right? So the number one, for example, now there's a lot of acceptable answers here. The suggested solution here and the ones I'll give, they're just one idea. But as long as it links back, it's important. So CO2 emissions. Right? So one could be CO2 emissions. The rationale here, you are a production facility. So you're going to be involved in heavy production. You're going to have emissions. CO2 emissions is a good gauge of how sustainable the production process is. So it gives you an idea that you can try and reduce down those CO2 emissions and see, can we get them under control? And can you actually use that uh, as a kind of a unique selling point as well? All right? You might look at supply chain kilometers traveled. So for example, how far do our raw materials have to come? So your logic here in terms of environmental sustainability, if you're getting all your raw materials to manufacture these stoves from China, from Asia, from South America, it's not very environmentally sustainable. So you wanna say the more local goods you can get, the better. It shows much more 
uh, sustainability in terms of lower supply chain, lower travel costs, lower fuel usage, lower emissions. So that gives you a good idea in terms of what you're at. You might also say is um, energy rating of stoves sold. So the more energy efficient stoves in your portfolio, the more enviro sustainable the business. So what we might be saying is, well, are you selling energy efficient stoves? Because remember, go back to the business. If you're looking for the area of environmental sustainability, well, one non-financial measure is what portion of the stoves that you sell are energy rating A or A plus. So you have energy rating these stoves as well. So that gives you an idea, well, from a sales perspective and from a production perspective, that we're aware of what's going on. So you're only asked for three, but again, it's about the structure. You link it back to the business. If I was asked for a supermarket, I could have different ones. If I was asked for a hotel, I could have different measures again. But I'm making sure to the examiner, I show this is very directly relevant to a stove manufacturer. You could put there, percentage of staff with Enviro training. So are your sales staff, are your production staff trained in environmental sustainability? So they're aware you've a trained workforce about what is involved in this and what they can do within their own roles to improve the environmental sustainability of the business. So they are nice questions, but a lot of students fall into the trap of reverting to a generic cheat sheet. This won't work here. The cheat sheets for your KPIs, your balanced scorecard might give you some ideas, but you have to link it back to the business of the, co the company, in this case, stove manufacturers. So your last thing then uh, is part C, and this is asking you, so it's quite a short question overall, so you can gain a bit of time as well. We're not looking for big essays here. You read the requirements, you link it to the marks, and you give it back to the examiner in a format that can be easily corrected. Explain three limitations of heat using a single external benchmark reference site, as proposed by Kate. Well, so Kate's suggesting to use a single benchmark, the last hotel she worked for, Five Star Hotel. Well, the first obvious limitation here, this hotel is in a different sector completely to the company here and this company is called heat no relevant comparability now that should be an obvious enough one that this doesn't make sense there's a mark or two straight away the hotel is in a different sector it is different business model different kpis key performance indicators doesn't make sense the only reason kate is suggesting that is it was the last hotel she worked on. So it's not really the best approach here. You should be looking for companies uh, in a similar business, at a similar stage. By using a single benchmark, you are assuming that benchmark is best in class. So if I'm comparing, because remember they're asking you in general terms, What's the limitations of using a single benchmark reference site? They don't say just using the hotel. They say the concept of just using one benchmark. Well, one big trouble of using a single benchmark is you're assuming that benchmark is the best. Like I could be benchmarking myself against someone else, but I'm assuming that person is the person I should aspire to be or that company is what I should aspire to be. If they're inefficient as well, when I'm just benchmarking myself against an inefficient company. So it's not really a best one to use a single benchmark you're probably going to use an industry average or a collection of companies. So you make sure you're getting a good idea of what is best in class. And the last main limitation here, if you think about it is, there can be, if using one single benchmark, there can be a bias to just meet or match that performance. So if you're only saying, oh, let's benchmark ourselves against this hotel or this other company, you might just say, well, let's just meet their performance. There's no incentive to go over and above that. So it can create a bias or a complacency in the business once they reach that benchmark. So generally it's best practice. Now you don't have to put these down, but in terms of if they're asked for benchmarking, should be in same sector, should be a collection of peers, or industry average 
should be across a collection of metrics. So here's some of the key things. Now that's not a limitation, but that's just given your own perspective. You should be benchmarking your company against companies in the same sector. In this case, a stove manufacturer, if it was a hotel, other hotels, etc. It should be a collection of peers in that industry. You shouldn't just compare yourself against one company. Like if I'm a five-star hotel, I want to compare my performance against all other five-star hotels. Or if I'm a three-star hotel, all other three-star hotels. And it should be across a collection of metrics. You shouldn't just look at one or two metrics because then you could be biased. You need to look at kind of a balanced scorecard of how am I getting on against these benchmark companies across a number of different aspects of the business. But what you're trying to take away from these questions in performance measurement is they're very popular with the examiner. They're on nearly every paper. Often they're standalone um, questions themselves, usually question two, but they're very short. There's not that much information. From a technical point of view, they're not overly difficult in terms of there's no detailed computationals or detailed theories. But where students let themselves down, and you can go back and look at the feedback in some of these solutions, uh, is typically application. They don't read the question carefully enough, for example, here, and they give generic non-financial measures. But you can't give generic measures if you're asked about environmental sustainability. All your measures here must be specific to environmental sustainability. And that's what usually the examiner does here is they know students like these questions, so they will ask quite narrow, specific requirements. And if you don't read the requirement carefully, you can fall into the trap of going generic and score very few marks. Right. So just bear that in mind, go and have a look at more recent papers now, have a look at the past paper analysis, you'll see performance measurement comes up nearly every year. So that was autumn 18 question two, focused on management accounting and performance measurement.